we try to behave ourselves on the story, but y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. I think you need to tell them to sit their bad asses down so the grown folks in here talking about it. T-G-I-M. Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. It's Wednesday, and of course, we are back with a brand new episode of TGIF, your favorite show. Uh, that's just not what I said, that's what people say online. Now we're here to spill the tea and break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. And later on in the show, we are catching up with the hilariously funny, talented, super cool, everybody's homegirl, Tashina Anna will be joining us. All right, let me introduce my co-host. Please welcome. It may switch it up because people be like, why you in? They, they, they criticize every little thing we do. Why you go to this person first? Why, 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 why? Uh, please welcome multimedia personality and someone who's been unlocking his better self as of late. Funky Dineva, what's up, you? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> hey, Claudia, you got, you got your new hair on today. You must have got paid. <laughs> oh, I'm always getting paid, honey. I'm always getting paid. Well, you was in them hotel rooms all across last week, so you you better. You better <laughs> My bills paid. are too high for those kind of getting paid. Okay, I got a family and a fortune. <laughs> all right, please welcome talk show hosts and brand strategists who we keep asking to help Sheree. Please welcome Al Rohn. What's up, Al? What's, up? What's going on, Claudia? I'm second tonight. Well, that means you thought Q was like gonna be in the night. <laughs> wait a minute, I don't know. Wait a minute. Let me read my contract. I'm just going first. <laughs> no, well, you know what? Um, I you know I look at all the comments and and for some reason when a show is popular in love like this, people mm-hmm. wanna find any little thing like if I always go to you, why do you always go to him first? Why don't you and this is like I'm gonna switch it up. I'm not gonna be predictable anymore, y'all. I told okay. you somebody said. It's obvious you don't like Claudia. Look how he's sitting in front of her face on the picture <laughs> or whatever. And I was like, where like, where would you like me to sit <laughs> on, on this thing? Definitely you know, not covering me up. He's sitting in front of her face on purpose. I'm like, right. guys, come on. They they find any little thing. And then like recently, re- and this is recently, y'all, it ain't been the whole time. Recently, Q and I have been agreeing on certain topics. Not all hard, <laughs> and they think we gang up on Al. And then sometimes- all, I, no, they're, they're that they're right about. No, they're you not. Two, no, they're you, not. Two always, you two always gang up on me. No, we don't. You, you That's only when you're wrong. And there's the whole time when you and Q, Q and Al was always agreeing and I was odd man out. Like they always, listen, when it's a three, a trio like this, it's going to be like that. There's going to be times when me and Al is not agreeing with Funky. There's going to be times when Funky and me are not agreeing with Al and vice versa. Like, that's just how it goes. Okay. Anyways, um, Al, you was out in these streets in, in D.C. and you was hanging out at Lisa Ray's party. Uh, yes. You had a good time? Yes. Uh, do we have a picture that production can share? Or did we get a chance to put the picture in? So I was actually hanging out with Lisa Ray for her birthday and um, Mike Epps. And let me tell you something about Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray, the thing I love about her the most is that she makes sure that her girlfriends that she's had for years, I'm not talking about 10 years, I'm not talking about 20 years, but people that she's known for 30 years, she makes sure all of those women that support her on her birthday sit in VIP. And it was just, it was just beautiful to watch. Thank you, Lisa Ray, for inviting me. Um, I had a really, really great time. And once again, happy belated birthday. She definitely had a nice little time. And now she's in Florida, so I hope she's okay with all that's happening down there, Lisa Ray. Once well, again, shit, happy- that's how I'm doing. I'm the one down here in the damn Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about Hell, that. Lisa Ray asks, <laughs> how you doing, you? You was sensitive today. And let, me, and let me ask y'all a question. Where she be getting all that damn white from? Like that, that woman been wearing white for now for 20 something damn years. It can't be no more white left on the damn planet for Lisa. Is she getting it made? I don't know. I, 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 I would think that it would be a challenge to always have a different outfit on and always be in white. And she always consistently does it. All right. I love it. It's cute. It's cute for her branding purposes. I'm just wondering where the hell she getting it from. And you guys, she's looking good these days. She's so tiny. I mean, her body, her body looks like it, you know, did like the last 20 years ago. It's, I mean, she's beautiful. I she, told her too. She stayed with her. Oh, would you date her, um, Al? Would you, would you holler at her? I don't think that I can afford Lisa Ray. <laughs> who could you afford? Like, who would be on your scale? Like, who do you think you're like, you know, I can afford that one? Um, let me see. Hmm. Marsha Warfield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I don't know. You know, those Hollywood women that have been doing it for so long, I just feel like they should be treated a certain way at all times. You know what I'm saying? So even though I would holler at them, I don't know that I would try to step up to the plate because I'd be like, yo, you deserve to be taken care of every day. And I just don't know that, you know, right now, I in, just in, short, in short, what I'm hearing you say is Fox Soul don't pay enough. <laughs> you is on fire today, Fox right? Soul pays good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me now start with y'all. All right, y'all, let's get into the hot topic. Uh, are we good with the sound? Are yeah, okay? we good. Mass control says we're good. They're saying in the chat that there's a sound issue. So, okay, we're popping. Maybe step away from my mic. Maybe we're too close. Are right, we gonna work it out? We're gonna figure it out. They said they're still saying it, you guys. I don't know if we should go to break. Okay, let's say go to topics. All right, y'all, uh, the baby is once again trolling Megan Thee Stallion after featuring a Meg lookalike in this new video, Boogeyman. Well, Megan seemingly responded to the baby's antics during her performance at the iHeart Radio Festival. Take a look. So look, I don't know about y'all, but I love my body. I do what I want to with my body. All right, y'all. What are your thoughts on Megan com Megan's comments, and do you think they are related to Meg the Stallion? Q, let's start with you. I guess she do whatever she wants to with her body, and whoever she wants to with her body, because that's what she was alluding to, in my opinion. You know, we last week we did the story about the baby coming out and saying that he slept with her the night before she had the Tory Lanez incident. And I think that was just her being the grown woman saying, "Look, I'm grown. I do whatever I want to do uh, with my body." Al, what do you think? You know, I, I'm confused because I've seen a number of Megan's performances, you know, I've seen them a couple of times, and this is her opening to her song, Body. I mean, she says that same thing every time she opens for one of her shows, so I'm not, I'm confused as to why they are conflating the two. Why are they saying that this is in response to the baby when she's been saying this ever since she made the song, Body? Well, I think a lot of people didn't. I didn't know that she did that before. Neither. I've never seen her in concert. And I think that with the timing of what's going on got people thinking that. And that's a perfect example of how things get kind of misconstrued because of a clip. And, you know, we've had that's happened to us as well. Hey, let's take a quick commercial break and see what's going on with the audio. Make sure everything's good because we want y'all to hear all the tea that we got for y'all tonight. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. I hope we are all good and good to go. Give us a thumbs up in the chat. We are sounding good and looking good and you are enjoying the show. Also hit that like button, get those likes all the way up. All right, y'all, let's get into this Danny Lay story. Uh, she's People are accusing her of uh, demanding the Wild and Out producers remove B. Simone's appearance from her episode after assuming Simone slept with her baby daddy, the baby. Uh, the father of her child. Now, B. Simone appeared on the Tamron Hall show today and commented on the accusation. B. Simone said, "It is true, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have grace for that situation. Uh, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Especially, you know, she's not that mature, so we're going to have grace for her and just move forward." Shortly after B. Simone's interview went viral, Danny released the following video. So, you know, me and B. Simone are not cool. So, I just my team asked if it's cool she doesn't do the episode that I do, respectfully. Okay, I was looking online about this, and did y'all know that there was supposedly a B. Simone diss song that she dropped to Danny? So I think that also had a part of it. Al, what do you think about this? I, I, I'm good. I'm just, this is another one where I'm confused, everybody. Okay, so wait a minute. <clears throat> what is, I need Claudia, I need you and Q's tip. So Danny Lee, isn't this a young lady that we reported on a couple of months ago because she had a baby with the baby and he was putting her out? Yes. Isn't this Correct. the same young lady? Okay. How does this young lady now have a team of people working with her? What is she? Is she, what does she do? She's an artist. Oh, she is an artist. Mm -hmm. Is she signed with someone? Yes, yeah, she's she's pretty known. Oh, is, is she? she? Yeah, she's pretty successful. Oh, okay. All right. She's well, a, She's a singer. Oh, she's a singer. Okay, got it. So, I mean, listen, I just thought it was very confusing that B. Simone had been with Wild and Out for so long and with so many seasons and episodes that now the baby's, you know, baby mama comes and has a problem and they remove her from it. I just didn't like a woman taking another woman's check or blocking another woman's check. I, I, I personally didn't like it. So I, and I also didn't understand it because I didn't understand that she was an artist. So, okay, cool. Got it. Okay. Q, what do you think? Be Simone a better woman than I ever be. 
that that would have been my last day at Wild and Out. I, I, I honestly wish a bitch would show up at my job, show up on this job and talk about they not going to do the show if, if I'm on the show. Then your ass just ain't coming on the show. And it's not like Danny Lee is Beyonce. If Danny Lee was an A-lister making that request, I could completely understand it. But uh -huh. those two are lateral when it comes to who they are in the industry. And I think that it was real messed up on MTV's behalf or the producer's behalf to kick her off her job because a B got a personal issue. If, if, if I don't know what B Simone's pockets look like, but obviously you're not respected there. Um, and, and I'm a firm believer of go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. That would have been my last day at Wilding Out. So I can understand both positions if you invite me on a show with a host that I don't like. But guess what? I probably wouldn't do the show. You know, there's been times with this mm -hmm. show that there's been people that have been wanting to get on this show or, th or these shows or my old show that if I don't have it, if, if it's too ugly and I think it's going to be negative television, then we just don't do it. And I think uh, I think MTV should have protected their cast member at B. Simone. Right. And also a conversation should have been had with Danny. Like, you know what? Uh, we understand there's some issues with our, our, you know, one of our cast members and maybe had a conversation because there's been times that I there has been. Uh, I could see where someone could like not be there that day if there was a if it was a real big get like we have to have this person on our show is going to help us. But I think mm -hmm. MTV was really wrong if they knew if they knew there was an issue to book this woman knowing the issue and then take their cast member out because of course you're going to respect the guest that's there. She's what not big enough. Out? What? She's not big enough. Right. They didn't even get any. So, they didn't even get anything out of the deal. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they were interviewing Beyonce. Then it makes sense. Or maybe I'm just too old and removed, but I really don't feel like they gained anything by having Danny Lee. They could have easily, they could have, they could have switched Danny Lee out for Bad Baby, for the um, for Roland Ray, for for Bobby Lights. All of those people would have brought the same amount of ratings. So I would have passed on Danny Lee's ass. Let me let me ask you this though, seriously, what is going on at Wild and Out with all these baby mamas? Don't two two of the Wild and Out women are now his baby mamas, Ken, uh, Nick Cannon's baby mamas, and now they have on another baby mama, um, Danny Lee, Dave, the baby's baby mama. Is what What's going on over there? Because I haven't seen it in a while. You mean with having so many baby mamas? Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, they, they, have a, uh, they don't have a no fraternizing clause over there. You can screw your coworkers and still have your job, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Must be, right? Ooh. All Not right. like at the Celtics, huh? Man, such a mess. Oh, I heard some tea about that, and I heard some tea about a, another NBA scandal that might be coming out, but I don't have the details there, but there might be some R-word allegations, man-on-man -man allegations, but we're going to get to that when we get the real tea and the police report that's going to be coming out soon. Okay, you heard it here first. Uh, Young Miami told XS XXL Magazine about her big plans for her podcast, Carisha Please. She said, I want to take it to the next level. I want to be like, I think, you know, she has a podcast now, a person like Wendy Williams. I'm dreaming big. I want to go to the highest of the highest. I want to be the Black Oprah. Q, what you think about Young Miami? Do you think she could be the Black Oprah of this generation? Is somebody going to tell her that Oprah Black? <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. And then number two, Mama, I love you. You my Miami people, but you're going to need a translator and a sign language interpreter if you if you plan on being the Black Oprah as opposed to the white Oprah. Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely love her 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 podcast, Carisha, please. It, 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 it's niche. It, it, it talks to that generation of kids over there, it's raw, it's uncut, and I'm happy for Carisha. But in terms of being the Black Oprah, Mama, I think that's just a little ambitious. Just a little ambitious. That's right. Okay, she is very entertaining and very funny. <laughs> Al, what you, Al, what do you think? I, mean, I concur with I concur with Q on this. You know, Carisha, she is cute. Her show is fun. It's flirty. She's a beautiful girl. We love her accent and all her broken English. We love that she's not a journalist and she's not that professional. But it's all about her personality. And I do believe Carisha has the ability to usher in a new genre of talk, <laughs> one where you don't have to like no, have a complete. No, Com at all. <laughs> right, command on the English language. But I felt like that that comment was just a little bit too disrespectful for my liking. I, I, I just can't sit here and let you disrespect the, 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 the queen of television, specifically daytime television, Ms. Oprah Winfrey. 
Oprah is 100% black and she spent 49 years of her life um, building a spot for black women and men in entertainment. So I can't sit here and let her make that comment and not be checked for it. And millennials kind of do that because think about it. Oprah was the first black woman of color to host a TV show program at the age of 19. She was the first black female billionaire. She was the first black woman to own her own production company. She was the first African-American woman to be named one of the most influential people in entertainment. We know that Oprah Winfrey, if not anything, is a black woman and made a way for you to sit in the seat that you're in, Carisha. So keep it cute because you know I like you and I support you, but let's not disrespect the queen like this ever again. I think in millennial talk, she doesn't even think she's being disrespectful. She's right. actually probably a, a, an ode to her, a tip of the hat. I just think we are from a different generation where respect levels are different. That's the way these young people talk <clears throat> nowadays. I don't think she meant anything by it. I think she was actually giving her props. But, you know, Oprah's Oprah and Carisha, there's definitely an audience for Carisha. It's not the same audience as Oprah, let's be very clear. But there's definitely an audience and a space for both of them. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but do not go away because we have... Funny lady, hilarious, talented, beautiful, cool. Everybody's home, girl. She's done it all. We got our girl Tashina Arnold coming through. We'll be right back with more after the break. Welcome back to TGIF. Uh, if you are enjoying the show, please give us some thumbs up, some flames up in the comments. You're going to want to put some flames when you hear who our guest is. Joining us now is two-time NAACP Image Award winning actress who's done it all. I love her. Please welcome Tashina Arnold. Hey, girl. Oh, hello, everybody. Hey, Tashina. Oh, What's going no. on, Tashina? Nothing. Everything and nothing. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything and nothing. How's everybody? Good. We Very we good. are very happy to have you here. We don't do a lot of guests here on TGIF. Like it's definitely mostly like we just talk about you know topics. So to have you here is definitely a treat. So we appreciate you being here. So let's just yeah. go ahead and get into it. And we are going to get into your business just a little bit, of course. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, before we get started, let's kick things off with the morning prayer you recently posted on Twitter. You tweeted, "I pray you wake up this morning no longer as a victim, but as a victor." It's time to be victorious from your life's adversar adversar adversities, I'm sorry, challenges. I had adversities reading that. Um, <laughs> tests and obstacles. Hashtag claim your victory before someone else does it for you. I want to ask you, listen, I know it's a crazy time with this world right now, and we we appreciate that prayer, but what inspired you to, to do that? Literally, Claudia, I wake up every morning, and if, you know, God put something on my spirit, I just, I tweet it. <laughs> I got to think about it. And I like to do it at 5.55 at 5.58, 5 a.m. Because I'm an early riser due to being in show business, but, you know, so long. I, like, wake up really early. So someone, one morning, I, like, was waking up at 4.30 every morning. And so someone told me, they said, you know, that's when the spirits are trying to speak to you. That's when your ancestors are trying to talk to you and stuff. So I kind of start paying attention to it. I said, okay, this would be a good way to send positivity. Because sometimes, you know, I like going on Twitter, but then, you know, I'll have my little, you know, rants and then I'll hop off and I'll be done. But I said, you know what, let me change it and just go positive. Because mm -hmm. I, I like literally there's enough ne negativity. And, you know, I'm older. I love what you said. You said too old and remove. That would be me. That is, that's it. <laughs> I, when, you, when you said that, I was like, yeah, that kind of sums up. Because I'm, oh, I'm 53 now. I'm like, we, you know, I'm hung. I've done the whole thing. I stay out of my everybody else's business. And I just want to make sure that I continue to, you know, put into the legacy that I've created for myself and my daughter. That's it. So, Tashina, let me start off by saying I absolutely love those car videos that you and your daughter do when y'all are singing, you're taking her to school. I love that. But months ago, you celebrated the 30th anniversary of Martin with the reunion. How did it feel to give the fans a much needed reunion? And also, what that check looking like still after 30 years? Oh, he <laughs> Stay out of my pocket, damn <laughs> it. Uh, it feels good. I can't believe that people still enjoy Martin. Like, I don't, I'm a person, I don't watch myself, so I don't watch my episodes of anything that I do. And I can't believe that people still quote Martin. We didn't know what we had back then. We just had a lot of fun. But to see here and watch generations of people enjoy it, of course, it's satisfying. It makes me feel like all the hard work that we put into it, it, you know, it pays off. And to be able to, you know, have my daughter and see myself in her, 
Uh, being a single mom at a certain point wasn't easy. And I just started, you know, I was trying to get Elijah to sing and she refused to sing. She went to Debbie Allen Dance Academy, so all she wanted to do was dance. I said, no, baby, you know, you have a beautiful voice. You got to sing. She was like, I don't want to sing. So we would fight every morning, going to school. We'd be in the car for a whole hour and a half with a kid. You know, that's not easy, and especially a stubborn child. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start playing the music she wants to listen to. And I just posted a video of us singing, and I got so many responses from it. I, I had single fathers, I had single mothers, I had grandmothers, I had aunties that were raising kids. So it got such a response. I said, okay, it feels good to know that I'm not alone. Cause I had some really, really frustrating mornings in, in, in you know, with my daughter. Cause I didn't plan, nobody plans to be a single mother. Nobody like plans to do it alone, but thank God I don't do it alone. I have a great team of people. My family is amazing. And my daughter has been raised by the village for sure. But it's a pot, another positive thing that I can do and give back in this whole crazy social media world. People in the comments are saying watching you and your daughter on Instagram is, is basic. It's pure joy. So they are loving it. So you're definitely, it's resonating. Al? We appreciate it. Sure. So Tashina, to me, it looks like you and Tish Campbell have so much fun together. It's like, you guys are always together. It's like, she's freaking, you're frack. Like, tell me, like, tell me about that friendship. What do you love about your friendship with her? Tish and I literally have gone through a little bit of everything. We've been able to see each other grow. Like we were friends, we've been friends since age 11 and 12. I was 11, she was 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, you know, what consummated our relationship is when we did Little Shop of Horrors. You have a little black girl from Newark, New Jersey, Tisha. You had a little black girl from Jamaica, Queens, me, living in London for a whole year. All we had was each other. So that's kind of where we just, you know, we try, we, we agreed to trust each other. We agreed to always have each other's back. So it, it's a relationship that has been cultivated throughout the years and has stood the test of time. Cause we've had our, you know, differences, but like her song, still here. We're mm -hmm. still here. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. You know what I love about that? Like, the fact that you knew someone from way back, because a lot of people probably thought that y'all got together on Martin, right? That didn't know the history. And to know that since you guys were little girls and to see each other grow and 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 be equally as successful, like that is so freaking dope to like, to rise together with your bestie like that. And I've seen y'all, we all love seeing y'all work together. Like when y'all host the Soul Train Awards, you oh, guys are off the, the chain. Like y'all should be the permanent hosts. No, we're not. We're not doing Soul Train this year. I'm happy you mentioned it. We're, you know, four um, years. Four years is a good run. Four yeah. years is a good run. And you know, we can't complain because you know we seize the opportunity. And I tell I tell people all the time, entertaining is my ministry. This is what I love doing. I wake up every day loving my job. Yes, I get pissed off sometimes. Yes, I get tired. Yes, I get worn out. Yes, people get on my nerves. But guess what? I'm doing what I love doing. So Tisha's the same way. This is all she's been entertaining forever. So us together, we just have a synergy. Mm -hmm. We finish each other's sentences. It's just I think maybe we've known each other in another lifetime. I don't know. I but, think it makes Yeah. I'm sorry. Amen. It makes us happy to see that that's a real friendship. You know, you yeah. hear about friendships like Sex in the City, then in real life, they hate each other, but y'all really love each other. But let's get into another show because you, ha you have shows, you work. Uh, Tashina, season five of your hit show, The Neighborhood, premiered last week. Are you surprised by how much people loved your show? That's number one. Also, what's it work like to work with Cedric the Entertainer, who we love, and how do you keep a straight face during those tapings? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I am not surprised that the show was successful because doing this, in, doing being in this industry so long, guys and gal, um, when you when I sit at a table read and I just feel good, I was like, yeah, this show is going to be a success. Mm -hmm. Every time I've done it, every time I did it. Well, everybody hates Chris. I wasn't able, we didn't make it to a uh, hundred episodes, but we did four years. And that was through a transition of, you know, changing uh, networks. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, with Martin, I was like, yeah, this feels good. This feels good. So it's always the table read that tells it for me. And then with everybody, with, uh, with uh, the neighborhood, I never worked with Cedric. 
I was like, oh my God, Cedric, I've worked with, you know, Mike Epps, you know, Chris Rock. I'll be my boy, Martin. I've worked with all of these amazing black male, amazing comedians and never worked with Cedric. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show. And I had never been, been on a major network. When I did Martin, Martin was on Fox, but Fox was an independent network. At the time. It's big now, but, you know. <laughs> Thanks, to <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to y'all. Thanks to y'all. But Cedric is just such a beautiful human being. They always says, when you start, when it's good at the head, the tail will follow. And he is just an amazing person. And he's so freaking funny, y'all. Like, Cedric does this thing where if he's tired, he gets giddy and he'll start dancing. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and he can really dance. So we just have fun. Our whole set, our cast, our crew, everybody's cool. Everybody is cool with each other. It's it's a blessing to be a part of another body of work that I can really be proud of. Well, that, that's good to know. Tashina, we've watched you go from in front of the camera to now showcasing your directing skills on the BET Her movie, Oh Baby Baby. Yeah. What can you tell us about that film? Uh, well, it's a film about, uh, a, well, it's a, tr it's a 20 minute short a film. Um, and it's about a woman who wants to have a child. She's a fashion, you know, editor. She's a fashion director. And it's a true story. Uh, the woman, Maggie, who actually wrote it, uh, really went through it. She wanted to have children. She took the IVF shots. The IVF shots gave her cancer. Mm. So, you know, a lot of us as Black women, we are uninformed. And, you know, if something doesn't affect you, of course, you're not going to be thinking about it. You're not going to think to ask questions if it doesn't affect you directly. But we all know people that have, we lost through best breast cancer. Literally, somebody that's very close to me just had a mastectomy two days ago. You know, I have, you know, somebody that one of my friends that I love dearly had a mastectomy six months ago, but they're still here to tell this story. So that's why I tell people all the time, take care of your body and your body will take care of you. I'm 53 years old and I'm holding on to everything I got <laughs> left. <laughs> because, you know, we, we're up against a lot, you guys. You know, we got the chemtrails, all this artificial crap that we're ingesting and, 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 and breathing. So we just got to do the best we can to take care of ourselves, but more importantly, take care of each other. Well, I want to take care of some of the comments that are coming in for you. Oh, I Lord. I know, I hope you're able to watch this uh, replay tomorrow and I'm gonna, I'll text you and tell you when it comes on in the link. It's all positive. Like, first of all, they're surprised that we're so professional with you because we be acting up on this show. So they're happy about that. <laughs> Second of all, they're all saying 53 where you look 35. They're, every comment, and I mean every comment, Tashina, is positive. They are loving your spirit. God is good. God is good. Listen, uh, I love, we all go through things, right? We all go through things, but do we get through it? We got to get through it. I've had my challenges, but God has blessed me to have this ministry of entertaining and I put it in high regard. And now that I am in my fifties, I'm more cognizant of how people feel. I'm more cognizant of, you know, my, the words that I say, because right now we have to understand, especially as black women, because I always be, speak from a black woman's perspective, our words, our thoughts are very powerful. You can have anything you want. You can do anything you want, but you got to be ready when that time comes, when it happens. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us ask for things and we're not ready for it. So that's why I kind of, yeah. But I want to always be ready to give. I want to always be ready to serve. I want to always be ready to make sure that I am um, so into the things that I love. Well, we love you. And what can the fans expect from you next? Is there anything we need to look out for? I know you're busy, but is there anything else that we need to look out for and support? We want to make sure we support you in everything you do. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for supporting the neighborhood. Thank you for that. Because if it weren't for fans believing in it and trusting in it and riding, riding with us, we would have been off the air because you never know. Things come and go. So thank you for, uh, you know, supporting us. But my sister and I, we have a company called Queens Light Entertainment. So now I'm getting my hand not just at directing, but also producing. So we're looking for content as well. Because finally, I'm at a position where I can tell our stories. Mm -hmm. I want to tell, uh, we should tell our own stories. So I want to see more of that. The music, the, the, the industry, it's, it's come a long way, but we got a long way to go. 
We've got a long way to go. So I just want to continue to tell our stories. Well, we expect to see you around for a very long time. You ain't going nowhere. You are a legend, an icon. We, we so uh, appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much for stopping by, T. And Thank please support for to Sheena Arnold and everything she does. And we will look uh -huh. we'll be looking forward to these uh, great projects from your company. We're going to take a And Al, you owe me a drink, because Al, you'll be fucking great. You got away you. without allowing me a drink, Al. Like, Quinn, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Likewise, nice likewise. likewise. you all, woman. You know that. Y'all be blessed. Be blessed, be blessed. Okay. I love you Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Quick commercial Bye -bye. break where we rack with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to Tashita Arnold. I just got to read a couple comments from the chat because they're so impressed with us. And I think I need to share this. Um, Tanya Sumter says, we're glad to know y'all know how to act in front of company. <laughs> <laughs> Q Jam says, TGIF, this was an amazing interview. Mad props. And Ashley Edwards says, Q and Claudia, you'd be great actors and actresses for a movie with Tashita. And uh, they all were really just saying, giving us props. And they're very surprised that we knew how to act around guests. Y'all cut it out. Claudia has ha had her own um, radio show, live TV show. I've had a live talk show. Uh, I do live radio now. We know how to act now. <laughs> don't do not do us. Right, they act like we little heathens all the time. We got layers and levels. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's get into this. Now, um, let's talk about this. And I want to bring y'all into this tonight because y'all have experience with this and y'all have tried this, wild grains. Now, were you guys one of the millions who tried making bread a couple years ago or maybe the thought of growing your own sourdough starter was, well, a non-starter for you? Have any of y'all... Had a little experience in the kitchen with the baking, anybody? I don't try to bake bread, but that's why I'm glad wild grain is around because <laughs> I don't have to or whatever. As a matter of fact, I got my box today. When my delivery notification went off, I got my box today. And I'm going to tell y'all what I love about wild grain. They got these waffles I keep telling y'all about. And these croissants are so damn good. And, you know, we got this hurricane going on down here. So I didn't have no supplies. So I got my whole box of wild grain right now I can eat on in case the grocery stores are closed for the next couple of days. So you got your whole box. Okay, and Al, box. I'm going to get to you in a second because Al be tearing that wild grain <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, like, for real, for real. For real. Uh, now, whichever what you guys were, we can all agree there's nothing like hot, delicious, fresh-baked bread. So good. Well, check this out. What if I told you that you can get all the mouth-watering flavor with none of the time and work involved? Well, now you can from Wild Grain. Like Funky said, Wild Grain is the first baked from frozen box from artisanal bread. Plus, they have amazing rolls, pastries, and even handmade pasta. Wild Grain uses only clean ingredients such as unbleached and non-GMO flour and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's better for you and tastes better than anything you can find in a grocery store. Plus, for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank so far, they've donated over 120,000 meals. Here's how it works. Sign up, choose what type of box you want to receive, and how often. Then Wild Grain delivers a box of bread, pasta, and pastries with easy-to-follow instructions for free. Now, every time, every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. And if you're traveling or if your freeze is already stocked, no problem. Uh, it's easy to schedule, skip, or cancel. Al, you've been tearing up. <laughs> that, that food and you always talk about it and Al yeah. has already asked us to send us his box, our, our box. <laughs> it's true <laughs> let me tell you I don't know if you guys are anything like me you love bread I go through bread a lot um, they they have croissants they have loaves of bread they have the best uh, egg McMuffins they have regular biscuits everybody so my, my breakfast time is just like completely pleased because I have that and it's it's almost like you're at a pastry shop that's how good the bread tastes when you're doing it at home in addition to that i got the chocolate chip cookies recently i got the apple pockets i told you about the peach pockets i got the apple pockets i tried the apple pockets i put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it that was like heaven and then not to mention the pasta the pasta is made so authentic everybody and it comes to you frozen if you take it out of the bag it's made so authentic and prepare it it's almost as if you're an Italy itself. I, I can't rave enough about it, and I want everybody to know that they should try it. I'm a foodie, and I know if I like it, you will do more than like it. You will love it. Well, okay. G just fantastic reviews. These guys really like this food. Now, are y'all hungry yet? Well, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box, plus free croissants in every box 
that you can send to Al if you don't want them because <laughs> you know, right. everybody's plates. Okay, go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. You heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea. Once again, y'all, wildgrain.com slash tea, or you can use promo code T at checkout. Uh, the fellas love it. I got my box on the counter. Uh, I'm going to check it out and see what I can do with this tonight. But I highly recommend it. All right, y'all, quick commercial break and get back into the tea when we return. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, let's get into the story. President Joe Biden presented Elton John with the National Humanities Medal for his work to end AIDS and assist people living with AIDS. But social media feels a certain way about something Biden said to Elton John before he accepted the medal. Biden said jokingly, by the way, it's all his fault that we're spending $6 billion in taxpayers' money to, this month to help fight HIV and AIDS. Do you guys think his comment was insensitive or do you think people are making a big deal out of nothing? Q, let's start with you. What do you think about this? It was not insensitive at all. It was funny. It was said in jest. That's the way people talk. He was paying homage to Elton John. If anything, he was saying this man is so influential in his advocacy work that he's moved our administration to spend six billion dollars this month on HIV and AIDS research. People, shut the hell up. Go find something real to be upset about. Go discipline your damn kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> go, go check on your mama in the nursing home. Stop being so upset about every little damn thing. I mean, even if it was an off-color joke, the response was still $6 billion getting spent on HIV and AIDS research. Focus on that. Agreed. Al, what do you think about that? I this? couldn't agree with I couldn't agree with Funky more. You know, I just thought it was dry humor. Um, we all know that Biden is old. And like me, the older we get, the less a filter we have on what we say and how we say it. But it was very clear he was trying to really congratulate. And, and like Funky said, um, you know, show him the due respect. Because Elton John is also part of our community, and he has done some phenomenal work, not only in research and awareness, but also and the treatment of AIDS. And he is the reason why here in America um, that it's almost eradicated um, HIV and AIDS. So big up to Elton John. And thank you, Biden administration, for still putting money into saving the black and brown communities from this very deadly disease. I agree with you both. I get so sick and tight. Listen, we know Biden is old. I'm old. I mess up all the time. And I'm nowhere near his age. And I can't imagine how how much my decline is going to be cognitively by the time I'm his age. Listen, when he goes off script, he has, I think he has good meaning, but sometimes he like kind of switches around a word, whatever. And, it, and people jump on it because we are in social media now and nobody wants to put the whole clip up. They want to put a little sound bite that is one sentence long and you take everything out of context. Oh, Biden is blaming Elton John for AIDS. It's, it's so ridiculous and so obnoxious. And like Funky said, check on your mom in the nursing home. <laughs> file your taxes, get them calluses filed down from the bottom of your feet, fix that back rotten tooth. Or oh, better yet, the... go get tested. You get tested. Go get tested with the $6 billion, okay? You know what? Let's, <laughs> let's run down all the things that they should be doing. <laughs> fix the missing side tooth. You okay. change your cat's a little box. This, is why, this is why they said you guys were on your Fix your radiator day. in your car so you ain't got to stop and put water in it every day. 20 minutes. Oh, I got one. Change the batteries and your smoke fire detector <laughs> so we don't hear that beeping every five minutes when I'm on the phone with you. How about clean all that nasty rice out your microwave and that spilled <laughs> spaghetti sauce that splattered all over the place? Fellas and ladies, take care of that nail fungus you got on your second nail and, and, and figure out why it's so black. You can get some something for that. There's so many things you could be doing besides worrying. You got any more, Funky? No, nah, we're going to let it ride. We're going to let it ride. We got more stories. Get an oil changed. Okay. <laughs> Stop riding on them bald tires, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, that felt good. <laughs> Get a headboard for your bed in a nightstand. Like, I've been that, talking that about that. Part, oh. That part. That part. Okay. All right, y'all. An Arizona woman is behind bars uh, being accused of smuggling hundreds of illegal immigrants into the United States after they coughed up as much as $15,000 each to cross the border. 24-year-old Tanya Estolidio Hernandez 
allegedly smuggled. I tore that up. I know it. And y'all be giving hot Biden a hard time. I'm 49. All right. Uh, anyways, old girl smuggled between 80 and 100 migrants a month into the country for six months before she was arrested last Friday. Damn, you get that much money. Wait. I'm in, I'm in Texas. <laughs> Are we sure she didn't smuggle her own damn self into the damn country? <laughs> 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 that was so mean. But let me tell you something. Free that lady. Free that lady. Free that lady. I'm blaming rent on everything, okay? Rent is high. You got to sell dope, sell ass, and smuggle people to make the cost of living. I she ain't hurt nobody. She ain't hurt nobody. Them people, the fair exchange is no robbery. They wanted a ride. She provided them with transportation. Free that lady. Fifteen thousand dollars. Q, and, and, come on, Q. Now wait a minute. Now she was she was help she was helping illegal immigrants smuggle you know, get their way into the U.S. This is the thing that I learned from this report, though, on a serious note, that illegal immigrant smuggling is a huge business. Only in America can a 24-year-old woman smuggle 100 people at $15,000 a head, which is $1.5 million a month, which is $9 million in six months, and that is until she got caught. Only in America can you do this. But you know what? This shines a light on the border, to be honest with you, on the border, our U.S. border and our U.S. border border control because how was she able to do so many people for so long because we saw the second what Haitian tried to step across that border what was it in Texas they sent all 4,900 of them back home. Something's not right in that border. I feel like the border control is is being paid for this particular situation and it's not right. Well, this is why we need to take, teach critical race theory in schools because she was inspired by Harriet Tubman, okay? <laughs> Harriet, Harriet Tubman smuggled them people from the South to the North in this <laughs> Guadalupe. She invoked the spirit of Harriet Tubman and she magnified it. And she did one thing that Harriet Tubman was unable to do, baby. She did it with shoes on and she got paid. That is the hope and the dream of the slave, honey. 15000 ahead. To hell with this show. I'm about to start smuggling people. <laughs> so you're That's saying. Through Florida, right? You could do it through. Ooh, well, you could do it through Miami. So you're saying Harriet Tubman walks so Guadalupe can run? That's that part. <laughs> <laughs> that part for 15000 Yes, Lord. I'm kind of thinking about going out to El Paso. I'm a, <laughs> and give you a condo, right? Open I mean, up your I can Airbnb. Help. I'm like, we shoot a movie. They're extras. No? I mean, listen, 15000 ahead is worth the risk. Yeah. I, but I think the issue in this particular situation was that as the smuggler, she found herself not not being forthright and honest. And that's why one of the smuggle of one of the people, one of the husbands or the wives of the person being smuggled is the one that called blew the whistle on her. It'd be your own people. It'd be your own yeah. people. How you I gonna smuggled you to freedom and then you're going to report me. Right. Back to Venezuela. Uh, uh, the wife, Where bread the is five thousand dollars a loaf. The <laughs> the wife of one of the husbands that was being smuggled is the one that blew the whistle on her. She probably didn't want her husband to be in America. She wanted to be there about, without him. That's messed up. All right, all right. Let's get into this. Uh, okay, hold on, you guys. Okay, uh, Daphne Joy, the mother of Fifty Cent's son, Sire Jackson, clapped back at him on social media after she sparked dating rumors with Diddy at the iHeartRadio Awards. In response to the rumors, 50 Cent posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, oh, bleep, that's your mommy over there with Puffy, LOL. Remember what I told you the other day? These bleeps be crazy. Shaking my head. Now, Daphne replied, please stop doing this to me. I never bother you, and I'm an outstanding mother to our son. Can we please just focus on that? Um, what do you think about this and what 50 Cent wrote about Daphne and her response? Al, let's start with you. I just didn't like it. I felt bad for her. And, I, you know, I've said this before about 50 Cent. I just, please stop trolling these women. I just don't find it attractive. I don't find it attractive that he uses his platform to troll women, black, mixed, Spanish, whatever. I just I just don't like it. And then why, why troll the woman that takes care of your child? I'm, I'm not understanding this at all. Um, Q? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to catch a lot of backlash for this, but this is why I feel sometimes this whole protect black woman movement is bullshit because y'all don't even protect 
y'all own selves. Y'all still rock with 50 because y'all want to watch Power and Kanan book is so good and this, 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 that y'all literally overlook the things that he does to y'all sisters. 50 Cent is a horrible person when it comes to the way he treats people on social media and y'all still find a way to rock with him because he's y'all's favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Daphne Joy. She is one of the sweetest girls I ever have met in Hollywood. She's a beautiful girl. She used to date D. Ray Davis back in the day, and they had a public relationship for a long time, and then they ended, and then she got with 50. You never heard a lot, a lot of negative stuff about this woman. She minds her own business. She's a good mom. She said in a tweet, uh, in a post, I was with this man, what, 10, 15 years ago, and it resulted in a beautiful son. Now, our relationship didn't work out. It was a two-year relationship. It didn't work out. Is she not allowed to date other people? 50, you're with a, someone else. You're with Cubana Lynx, who's a beautiful girl. Like, I would be mad if my man is so, like, checking for his ex like that, like, making comments about that. Like, let her live. She doesn't have any scandal. We don't hear anything negative about her. It does mm -hmm. Clearly, her dating whoever she's dated does not take away from her being a good mom. The son looks very happy and well taken care of. And I just think that's mean. And, and, and we do need to start holding these men accountable. Like, leave her alone. Leave her alone, Fiddy. Like, leave her alone. Listen, um, we have some breaking news, some very sad breaking news. Uh, TMZ has learned, uh, reported that rapper Coolio has died in his Los Angeles home. They found him. He was 59 years old. Um, oh, wow. I worked with Coolio on a video, Ooh La La, and I've always been cool yeah. with him, and this sucks to get this news right now. Do yeah, man. Do y'all have... What a show. Mm. Ouch. Condolences. Oh, man. We're losing so many people, like, weekly that we grew up looking up to or just, I mean, just being entertained by 59 years old. is yes, You yeah. had a lot of life left to live that the cause of death has not been confirmed. Um, damn. I don't even know what to say right now. Any thoughts, uh, anything about Coolio you'd like to say or share? Um, I'm too shocked at this moment, other than mm. rest in peace, brother. He had some great music during his time. I mean, that that song he did on the Dangerous Mind soundtrack um, will always forever be a classic. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, condolences to him. Back in the day family. when I used to do videos and stuff, um, I was lucky enough to work with them. And he was so nice. You know, like you hear stories about video sets and how people are going to act. And like, it just transferred over to every time I saw him. And he was just always a happy guy. You know, like every time I saw him, he would be jovial and making everybody else laugh and 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 just life with a party. You know, he went through a lot. You know, he had some issues with substance abuse back in the day. He overcame that to be this big, successful entertainer, a likable guy, a friendly guy, a, not bitter. <sighs> I'm so sick of reporting on these stories, you guys. I really am. Yeah. Let's lighten things up. What we got? Uh... Shakira ass going to jail, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, we can Let's talk about Shakira ass. <laughs> She's about to stand trial. $13.9 million tax evasion case. Yesterday, Spanish authorities cleared the way for prosecutors to pursue further legal action against the hips don't lie, but my tax returns do singer. A trial, <laughs> that was pretty good, huh? A trial date has not yet been set, but she faces a possible eight-year sentence plus a large fine if she's found guilty of not paying taxes from 2012 to 2014. It's only two years, like, give her time. What are your thoughts on this update, Al? Q, who wants to go first? I mean, listen, for you to owe 13 billion, a million in taxes for just two years worth of unpaid tax returns, shit, I, I need to figure out if my hips to stop lying um, <laughs> or start lying, hell. I, I'm thinking you're going to say she hadn't paid taxes from 2012 to 2024. Just two years and she owed 13 million? That, ooh, Shakira making some crazy money over there. Well, you know, in 2020, she was voted Forbes highest paid female entertainer in the world. So, I mean, it makes sense. The sad part here is in 2018, she paid $25 million because they were going after her then and getting ready to throw her in jail. So for her to have additional tax liability, it's just irresponsible. And let me tell you something. You, Spain, the country of Spain does not play this. You guys know this. They have, The country of Spain has a hard on for entertainers and celebrities and athletes 
that don't pay their taxes. Remember, they went after Rafael Nadal. They went after uh, Lionel Messi. Remember, they went after, what's that guy's name? Cristiano, what's his name? Cristiano Ronaldo and oh, also no. Samuel Ito. They, the, the country of Spain, you don't pay your taxes, you're going to jail. And she faces, what is it? It's like nine, eight to nine years in prison plus a $30 million or a $22 million fine, eight years in prison and $22.7 million fine if she doesn't straighten this out from 2012 and 2014. I'm sick of taxes. Like, if I get told I'm making forty thousand dollars for this job, right? Why I can't make forty thousand? I'm so sick. I gotta. It's twenty. It's really twenty. And then if I found a way, like, and then you got the rich people, the people that own Amazon, Jeff Bezos, they don't pay no taxes on the most successful company in the world. It ain't right. It is just not right. Like, in churches, y'all don't pay taxes. And your passes be driving around and Rolls Royces and Bentleys and well and ghosts and all that and all kind of jewelry. It's just so unfair. Like we need a whole overhaul of the tax system throughout the world. You know, some countries like in the Netherlands, it's like 60, 70 percent taxes they pay. Like oh. it's ridiculous. Like they gangster, but they also give you health care and all the other stuff, but they gangster your money. All right, y'all. Shakira, good luck. But if you made you owe that much, you made a lot in those two years. I uh, bet you going to jail. <laughs> Shakira <laughs> is going to jail. <laughs> hey, y'all, we want to thank Tashina Arnold for joining us tonight. And thank you, everybody watching us on YouTube. Please watch the, the replay tomorrow and like us and subscribe. Stay tuned for Lisa Evers Crime and Hip Hop. See y'all Friday. And rest in peace, Coolio. Rest in oh, peace, wow. Coolio. Good night, peace. soulmates. And pay your taxes. Good night, soulmates. <laughs>